Hello again and welcome to The Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. Please adjust the three dots menu at the top, look at the bottom row, improve the quality, pause the video for a minute, look down in the description box so you can find out what today's video is about, and let's get into it. Today's prophecy is still looking at the United States, part of the America series, and I'm continuing to pile up the witnesses for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ by looking at the devolvement of the economic situation that the Lord Jesus says will come to the nation of the United States in future. Today's prophecy is called the stock and the store. And this is a very recent one from August 22nd, 2020. So the banner scripture is as follows. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, takes away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stock and the store, the whole supply of bread and the whole supply of water. Now this verse is in Isaiah 3 and verse 1. And it simply means that I'm going to take away from you everything that you need. I'm going to take away not only food from you, but I'm going to take away from you your basic supply. Everything that you depend on, the provisions, the resources, the money, um, the access that you're used to enjoying, I, the Lord, will take it away. And I added uh, the verse from the New Living Translation because they had a different way of looking at it. The Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, will take away from Jerusalem and Judah everything that they depend on, every bit of bread and every drop of water. So no matter how you look at this prophecy, it simply means that you will not even have the basic needs that you require for daily life. And if you're a student of scripture, if you like reading the prophetic books or even um, going through the original story of Israel's history, Israel's interaction with the Lord Jesus Christ, then you will understand that whenever a people stray from God, whenever a people begin to cast off the restraints of obeying God's laws and being loyal to God, exalting him as God and saying, we will worship you. We will praise you. We won't do these things because you're compelling us to do them. We're going to do these things of our own volition because we as people are wise enough and we have eyes and we can see that there is only one who made the great sea and all the things that are in it, one who formed the heavens, one who formed the dry land, one who has made all things and is ruler of all things. God is immortal. God is immaculate. God is perfect. And brothers and sisters, when someone is immortal, immaculate, and perfect, the right response to that person is not irreverence. It's not to treat that person as if they're nothing. And the horrible part about it is that not only do people disregard God, but then they worship man. They worship man. They lift people up so high and they place them on pedestals and they talk about them with so much awe. You hear people discussing politics in the nation of America as if gods were sitting in those uh, Senate seats and in, in Congress and, and making decisions that will last forever. I mean, brothers and sisters, can we not be wise enough to know, especially as we are in these particular times, that governments are so fleeting that they only get a set amount of time to make laws. And the curious thing is that even if they make a law, that law is not even as lasting as the laws that King Darius and King Cyrus used to make in the Bible. They were Persians and Medes, and the laws of the Persians and Medes could not be changed. When Daniel was put in the lion's den, the king loved Daniel. The Bible says that when the wise men tricked the king and they captured Daniel because he was praying and he would not stop praying to his God and they put him in the lion's den, the Bible says that the king's heart was cut. He was grieved. He was upset that he allowed himself in a moment of ego to be tricked by these wily advisors who served him. And the Bible says that the king sought from the dawn of the sun until it's going down. He sought in the law for a way to overturn the words of his own mouth that had condemned Daniel to be torn to pieces by lions. But the Bible said that he could not find a way to change the law. 
here in America, we're obeying laws that are not even laws at the moment. And yet when you hear people discussing what certain members of this party or that party are doing, she said no, and she blocked it, and he said yes, and it's going to happen, you would think that princes and gods were making laws that would last forever. We exalt the fleeting and momentary thoughts of a person who could be hit by a bus tomorrow and cease to exist. But the exalted, the eternal, flawless, and perfect laws of God are becoming, in fact, not even becoming, have been absolutely trampled to trash in this country. Brothers and sisters, it is not my intention to be a harbinger of doom. Nor is, my intent, nor is it my intention to exalt myself and say, I'm here to bring the judgment of God. God will bring his own judgment. He doesn't need me. I could also be hit by a bus tomorrow. God will do what he said he will do. But if you're watching these videos and you're wondering, why does this woman never say anything positive? The king once asked Jeremiah that. King asked Jeremiah, how come you never prophesy anything positive about me? They even asked um, Elijah that. How come you never say anything good about me? They asked another prophet that, Micaiah. If we live well, God's prophecies concerning us would be positive. There are one or two nations on the blog that God has actually given commendations. Germany is one. Canada is another. He did not say that they were perfect, but the prophecies that the Lord gave me for those nations were nothing compared, cannot even enter the same range as the endless, ongoing, and typified prophecies that I constantly receive for the United States. So if we're wondering why God is saying these things, let us look around outside. Let us look around at ourselves. And then we might be on the way to understanding why God is saying these things. So the Lord says in this prophecy that the United States will not even have the basic needs that we require for daily life. Hear the word of the Lord. I will take away the stock in the store dwindling everything will draw down this nation will dwindle it means to become tiny and small weak and powerless and less everything about her will go down food stocks supplies money position population faith Everything will weaken and loosen at the joints, and only those who know me will persist in faith to survive what is to come. So the Lord said that food shortages are coming and that we will see empty shelves in the nation. We've seen that in 2020, but it's going to grossly increase. The Lord says that the trucks will no longer bring food to the cities. And I've shared in other prophecies that the cities are really going to suffer when America begins to fall and topple because the cities don't farm. The cities don't raise chickens. The cities don't have cows in the field. They don't do anything to produce their food source. And the Lord says that trucks will stop coming to the cities and the homes of people will be completely empty, fallow and empty. Fallow means no longer productive, so no longer running. Many of us, we work hard to make sure that our homes are well oiled. You know, when we run out of this, we run out of that. We don't wait until the milk is finished. We don't wait until they shut the lights off. We pay our bills on time as much as we are able. And we do things to keep our homes well functional. But the Lord says that the homes will start to become fallow, which is non-functioning, non-productive, and empty. You are in new times where I will sustain the righteous, but the unrighteous are going to feel every last bit of what I'm sending to judge and humble America. The righteous will feel it too, but not as sharply. The stores are going to be empty on purpose. They will not restock when they run out of things. 
The supply chains of the nation will be broken and food will run low. The Lord says that the farmers of America are being deliberately attacked and they will eventually fail in their duty to feed the nation. And he says that the architects of those who are destroying this country know that when the farmers are unable to provide food, there will not be enough food for everybody. And he says the architects of destruction, that's what he calls them. The architects of destruction know this and they have planned it because when people are hungry, they become ungovernable. They become wild. They act out. We saw what happened recently in this country, only a day ago. When people act out, brothers and sisters, I have to tell you, for a moment, it feels like a victory. But listen to this one voice on this one channel. Whenever people act out and they take the bait of someone who has already planned something, what you will see coming is an iron fist in response. So you may do something that in the moment feels like, yeah, we showed them, we went out there and we did stuff to stand up for our civil rights. The response will be draconian. The response will be an iron fist and they will justify it by saying, we can't have this happen anymore. It's too dangerous and it's a security breach. It threatens national security. So the architects of destruction know exactly what they're doing when they attack the farmers. And the farmers, the, the Lord says, will eventually fail in their duty to feed the nation. It says the age of luxuries. I just mentioned luxuries in another word. The age of luxury and carefree living, of getting the wants and the extras. You know, the things that you just want because you like them. Oh, I like that dress. Oh, I like that game. Oh, I like that car. Oh, I think we need a summer home. It says those things, the age of that happening is over. Soon you, you won't even be able to get the basics that you need. I'm reading the prophecy directly. It says the farms will be choked and burned. Their production will be halted. And then you will groan with hunger. There is not enough to feed you all. And the wicked architects of approaching disaster know this. I will take away your manicures and your tight clothing and your gel-tipped nails. All that feel-good luxury is going to stop and this nation will be made contrite. Contrite means that you know you've done something and somebody has called you on it and you feel bad and you feel guilty. I will humble you, America. No longer will Americans get what they want, but they will suffer from abject hunger, from lack, and the social abuses that are common in other nations. Federal aid will not be able to cope with this need. People will be left to fend for themselves, and the reality of the times will finally begin to sink in. I will take away everything that you've been dependent on, even the things that you have taken for granted. The right to have elections, the right to vote, the right to be a free and a sovereign nation. America will return to her original condition. She started life as a child. She was a ward of the state of England. A ward means a child that is being raised or fostered by someone else. So the Lord says that America started life as a child that was being fostered by the, the United Kingdom or the nation of England as it was known at as, as that time. And America will end her days in the custody of foreign nations who will make every decision for her. So she started life as a child. She rose and she became a young woman and then a grown woman. But the choices that she has made and the trajectory that this nation has taken, God says she will end up a child again. Will she really be a child? No. What she will be is an adult being forced to live as a child. America will end up in the custody of foreign nations. They will decide what time the citizens of this nation wake up, what type of work they do, and even how long they live. Because your abominations are overflowing before me, therefore I will give these shores peace. I will give my land rest, peace, 
when I send you away to distant places from which you will not return. So I've shared in a video um, about a vision that the Lord gave me where I saw that the American Indians had been the original occupants of this land and then they saw in their visions at that time, God showed them that he was going to judge them. And the judgment that he brought on them was to bring foreign invaders from other lands who came and took over the Americas, populated it, decimated the population of the Native Americans and made them to be slaves and made them to be like squatters in their own land. And then I saw that in that vision and original people, God said that just as invaders came and drove the Native Americans away from their inheritance that he had given them to be their land, God said, because the, the, the occupants who lived in this nation forsook him and cursed him and refused to obey his laws or even to honor him as God, because they treated someone who is immaculate, important, and perfect with irreverence, rudeness, disrespect and mocked him he would allow foreign invaders to come and invade them but instead of those foreign invaders living in the land here with them as america did with the american indians he said that the americans would be taken away from this land they would be taken off in ships they would be made to be maid servants and manservants to new masters in foreign lands and they would not see the shores of this nation again I've brought that particular prophecy many times, so there's no need to go into it in detail here. The Lord simply says that for the abominations that have flowed and destroyed and polluted this land, which he sees as his land, his inheritance, he will give the land rest by taking the people who are the causes of the abominations away from here. This is the end of the prophecy. So I've said repeatedly that two or three witnesses confirm a matter. Two or three witnesses show that God is serious about what he's saying. This has to be, this is more than two or three witnesses. The Lord continues to show me these things. In fact, I shared on the blog recently that I'm trying to bring out some archival posts some posts that I originally thought that I would not share, things that I was going to just keep for my own information. I'm, I'm bringing them out, but what I find is that as I'm bringing them out, God continues giving me new words, and those new words have to go up. So I'm doing my best. So um, I'm going to link some other prophecies in the bottom, the empty basket, which I just made a video for, and a vision of America so that you can continue to see God's consistency when he talks about economic breakdown, failing government programs, financial bailouts, welfare, hard to find food items, hunger, loss of freedom, and the rise of a controlling state. This is Celestial. This is the master's voice. Thank you for being with me. And may God bless and keep each one of you out there. Subscribe to the channel. Visit the blog. Always read these prophecies for yourself. It's necessary for you to read them for yourself because you're going to have to pray for yourself, brothers and sisters. No one is able to ride the coattails of another person's faith. I have family. You have family. You can pray for your family, but ultimately, we will all stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and answer for the life that we have lived inside the body when we are eventually outside the body. In the same way, whether it's escape, provision, help that we will need from the Savior, you need to build a life of faith and prayer. You need to build a strong faith that will not be distracted and that will not be shaken when you see these things coming to this nation and eventually to the other nations of the world. May God bless you. May God keep you. Until next time, goodbye.